This painting made everyone shrinks. Here's why. Pope makes love to Lady Mary Worthley Montagu by William Frith. William Frith was one of the first modern artists in Victorian England to specialize in large-scale genre painting, producing largely panoramic paintings filled with archetypal characters of the day. He is widely considered one of the best English painters of the mid-19th century. Life at the Seaside, also known as Ramsgate Sands, 1854, the British Royal Collection, Derby Day, 1858, Tate Collection, and the Railway Station are three of his most famous works of genre painting, 1862, Royal Holloway College, University of London. Queen Victoria adored Freeth, and in 1853, he was made a full member of the Royal Academy. The public's estimation of him dropped following his passing, but it rose sharply after World War II. Some art critics consider him the best painter of the English social scene since William Hogarth, and his reputation as a major figure in Victorian art has only grown since then. 1697-1764 Keep watching to know more about the painter and his paintings. Origins and Early Career William Powell Frith, son of an innkeeper, was born in Harrogate and attended Sass's Evening School in Bloomsbury before being accepted to the Royal Academy Schools. Portraiture was where he got his start in the art world, and in 1838, he showed his work for the first time at the British Institution. Then in 1840, he exhibited a painting of subjects, and by 1845, he had joined the Royal Academy of Art as an associate member. After the passing of the great J.M.W. Turner in 1853, Frith became a full academician and thereafter traveled to Belgium, the Netherlands, and Germany in 1850, 1775 to 1851. Many of his early paintings reflected the prevailing aesthetic by depicting scenes from Shakespeare, Goldsmith, and Scott. Although he continued to paint historical subjects, his best-known works are representational paintings of everyday life, as he promised he would do in 1837. The Sleepy Model, 1853, London Royal Academy, a self-portrait and studio study of a model is an excellent example of his less ambitious works in his style. Amid the Seaside Frith began sketching the Ramsgate shoreline on September 38, 1851, and he prophetically noted that if successful, it will substantially modify my technique. Life at the Seaside or Ramsgate Sands, 1854 Royal Collection. The completed painting is widely regarded as one of the finest pictorial portrayals of the Victorian era because of its widespread acclaim following its exhibition at the Royal Academy. After purchasing the painting, Queen Victoria requested that Frith also depict the wedding of Princess Royal and the subsequent marriage of Edward VII, Prince of Wales. The painting itself. It was the year of the Glorious Revolution, 1688-89, to that both Alexander Pope and Lady Mary Worthley Montagu were born. They are separated by blood ties and political beliefs, yet bound by shared literary heritage. Pope, the son of a linen merchant in the city of London, had to strike out on his own to make a name for himself in the literary word. One of the ways he did this was by translating Homer's Iliad and Odyssey into English, and selling multi-volume sets to affluent subscribers who paid for them in installments over the years. Pope made around £5,000, or roughly £100,000 in today's money, off of each of these translations. In 1712, Lady Mary Pierpont, daughter of the Earl, later Duke of Kingston, wed fellow Whig Edward Bortley Montagu, who would shortly become ambassador to Constantinople. As a lady and aristocrat, her sense of propriety dictated that she never have her works published under her name. While Montagu supported Sir Robert Walpole, Pope was a Tory who sympathized with the Jacobites. Painting scenes from the lives of historical figures was William Frith's early specialty. Unfortunately, the poet Alexander Pope and his would-be sponsor, Lady Mary Worthley Montagu, had a terrible meeting shown here. Frith explained to those who came to see the Royal Academy exhibition in 1852, in her own words, he explained that the fight began because at some ill-chosen time, when she least expected what romancers term a declaration, he made such passionate love to her that she burst out laughing despite her best efforts to look angry and serious. The lawn is filled with symbols of Lady Mary's status and biography, including the coronet hanging above the sconces. 
the literary texts and Tulip. At the same time, the writing implement her tests to her status as the wife of the first ambassador to Turkey and her notoriety as a correspondent and writer. Pope's bowed back is hidden since he is seated and Lady Mary's face is revealed without disfiguring small fox scars. Still, Frith has treated both figures respectfully despite the background sculpture's gentle mockery. In retrospect, by the end of his life, he had completed two sets of five paintings each, depicting morality tales in the style of William Hogarth. Two of these books were The Road to Ruin, 1878, which warned of the perils of gambling, and The Race for Wealth, 1880, which detailed the difficulties of engaging in excessive financial speculation. Even after leaving the Royal Academy in 1890, he kept exhibiting until 1902. In addition to his membership in the clique, a group of artists that included Richard Dad, John Philip, and H.N. O'Neill, Frith listed several of the most well-known painters of the day as friends, as well as several writers, including Charles Dickens. Aside from the blatantly bourgeois aspect of his work, Fritz's ability to respond to general taste and his instant success did not endear him to the more avant-garde ice states. His memoirs, My Autobiography and Reminiscences, 1887, and Further Reminiscences, 1888, written when he was over 70, give funny and insightful insights into the creative circles of the time. And his greatest modern paintings are wonderful portrayals of life in Victoria's reign. Analysis and Compilations In November of 2006, the Guildhall Art Gallery in London hosted a significant retrospective of Fritz's painting. The following year, in the early spring, it made its way to Harrogate, where it was displayed at Mercer Art Gallery. In addition, several of Britain's finest art museums, including the British Royal Art Collection, the Tate Gallery, the Victoria and Albert Museum, the Derby Art Gallery, and the Harrogate Art Museum feature Fritz's paintings. If this story got you hooked in William Fritz's paintings, here are some of his other works. Derby Day Later in the same vein as Ramsgate Sands is the similarly successful painting Derby Day, 1858, London Tate Gallery, a kind of cross between John Leach and David Wilkie, plus a dash of Degora type here and there, and some nice seasoning with Dickens' feeling, wrote the noted Victorian art critic John Ruskin, 1819-1900. His paintings' outstanding relevance to the present day can be attributed to the abundance of anecdotal details they feature. For example, when David Wilkie's Chelsea Pensioners, 1822, was displayed at the Royal Academy, it attracted such a large crowd that fences had to be erected to protect the paintings from curious onlookers, 1785-1841. The Railway Station the railway station Royal Holloway College was painted by Frith in 1862 and depicts Paddington Station, a landmark of Victorian architecture in London. Art dealer Louis Flatow paid a record sum for it and made a fortune from private showings to over 21,000 paying spectators and engravings of the canvas. Two years were spent on the painting process, during which time Frith used a combination of images and expert advice to realize the scene. Architectural artist William Scott Morton designed Paddington Station setting, and the steam engine was modeled after a photograph of the Sultan. Frith placed portraits of himself and his loved ones at the canvas's center, but the major focus of the composition is a scene from a fugitive's capture by detectives on the painting's right side. The Private View of the Royal Academy He completed the Private View of the Royal Academy, 1883, United Kingdom, private collection, after traveling to Italy in 1875 and Belgium and Holland in 1880. The artwork is a scathing attack on the pre-Raphaelites in the aesthetic movement, two groups Frith despised. Oscar Wilde is shown lecturing Frith and his companions on the finer points of painting while they look on disapprovingly. Other artists represented in the painting are Frederick Layton, 1830-96, and John Everett Millais, 1829-96. Sir Edwin Landseer, 1802-73, an English romantic painter famed for his emotive paintings of dogs, was also a member of the Academician and a prime example of Victorian principles and was the Frith. Frith made a lot of money off of the sale of copyright for engravings and the high prices he asked for these paintings, Derby Day for example, was purchased by Jacob Bell for £1,500. Do like, share, subscribe, and comment below on your thoughts about the paintings, and we'll see you in the next video.